Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are um, looking at uh, systems of equations, right? So I need to solve the system and it wants me to first do it by graphing and then do it algebraically using that equal values method. So this is coming from CPM course three, and this is chapter five, closure. Oops. Okay, chapter five, closure and number five dash 66. So it says for each pair of lines below, solve the system by first graphing, then algebraically using the equal values method. Explain how the graph confirms the algebraic results. So let's start with A here. So here's my two equations. So I'm going to draw, I've got a set of axes here. I'm going to draw my graph on that set of axes. I'm going to need to give myself a little bit more visual space. So let's do this. A little bit more. There we go. That's better. So I'm going to draw my axes on this uh, graph grid here and draw my, uh, and I'm, I'm moving my way down because I can see I've got plus 13. So I want to make sure that I can get to 13 on my Y axis. So I'll go like this. Here we go. Let's go right there. Let's make sure that that's 13. I think so. I'll go further down. So here's my x-axis, right? And here's my y-axis. Okay, so let's start with this. Y is equal to 7, and I'll do that one in blue. Y is equal to 7, x minus 5. Remember, when you're graphing lines, you have the form. I'll put it up here. Y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope or your growth. And B is your y-intercept, or you could call it your initial value. Okay, so I, I usually start with my B, my initial value. In this case, right here is a minus 5, which is a negative 5, right? Because it's usually plus B. Because it's minus 5, that means it's a negative 5. So I'm going to start down here at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's negative 5 on the y-axis. And then my growth is 7 over 1. So I'm going to, I'm going to, every... Every one I go over, I go up seven. So I'm going to go up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over one. So my growth is seven. Every one X, I'm going up seven. Every one X, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm going one over. Every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one over. So that is my line. And I connect my dots to show all the possible solutions. Solutions, right. Remember, why do we graph? We're graphing is because all of these, not just those points, are solutions to this equation, but every single one of these little tiny dots in this line represents a set of ordered pairs, a set of X's and Y's that work for this equation, right? So I'm determining I want to find the one ordered pair that works for both of them. So that's why I'm graphing to determine where they cross. Because if I can show where they cross, then that's going to show me what that answer is to the system. So this one here I'll do in purple. So this one I start at positive 13 on the Y, right? My B is 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is right up here. Double check. Yeah, okay. And then my, my growth, my slope is negative 2. So that means it's going downhill, right? So every time I'm going down two over that one, right? Every one X, every one X, I'm going down two, down two, down two. So I can see this is my growth and it's a decreasing for that line. And you can actually see where all of a sudden we already determined where they cross because that's where that point was on top of that other point. So there's this line here. We tend to also make sure we got to label our lines, right? So I will do that real quick. I didn't do that the first one. Negative 2x plus 13 is that line. And then my blue line was y is equal to 7x minus 5. So label them so I know which is what. The colors helps. So I have to find the, I'm solving the system. And the system, the actual solution is where they cross. So they cross right here. If I look at where I'm at, I'm at positive 2 on the x, right? And I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the Y. So right there is 9. 
positive x. So that point would be 2, comma 9. The x is 2, right? We always write point x, comma y. x is 2, y is 9. So the solution, according to the graph, the solution is 2, comma 9, according to the graph. That's the solution. So I'm going to just move us down right away and, and show you the equal values method to determine the, another way to get it and, and also to um, confirm my graphing result, right? So right now, I, I think the solution is 2, 9. That means 2, 9 works for both of these equations. And it's the only set of numbers that I could put into a 2 into the x for both of these and get a 9 for the y, right? That's the only one I, that would work for for that. So show you equal values method. Equal values method. Remember what we're looking for when we do solve a system is I want to know when does this y, when does that y equal that y? So when are the y's equal? So, or in other words, what x makes those y's the same, right? So I want to, I want to determine that using algebra. So we, we want to figure out what is the x that makes those y's equal. So we set the x part, that part of the equation equal to each other. So we're going to set those equal. So I'm going to say 7x minus 5 equals negative 2x plus 13. And then I solve for x because I'm looking for the x that makes these both equal, makes those y's the same. So to solve an equation, same steps as solving an equation with one variable. You, you isolate your variable term. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides to make it go away from here and get it on this side by itself. So 9x minus 5 is equal to 13. Then I still got to isolate that variable term. So I want to get rid of the 5 by adding 5. That's the opposite of minus 5. Adding 5 to both sides, I get 9x is equal to 18. And then divide by the coefficient. Therefore, x is equal to 2. So I have the answer x equals 2. And so what does that tell me? That means that when x is 2, y will be the same, right? And so far, I'm confirming my answer up here with the graph because there's x equals 2. So how would you check the y if you were doing this algebraically? Well, you have two equations. You have y is equal to 7x minus 5. So I want to put that 2 into there to see if what I get. So I'm going to say y is equal to, what, 7 times 2 minus 5. So 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus 5 is 9. So I get y equals 9 when I plug it into that equation. So what if I plug it into the other equation? So let's see. The y equals negative 2x plus 13. So again, if I plug in that 2 into that equation, let's see what I get. So I get oops, y equals negative 2 times 2 plus 13. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 13 is 9. So I get y equals 9 both times. So that confirms, yes, the answer is 2 comma 9. That when x equals 2, y equals 9. And that ordered pair works for both equations. So that's doing it algebraically and graphically. All right. So I'm going to quickly just finish this off. Uh, so we'll do the second set so you have the solution and you see what's happening. So again, I'm going to graph build my axes, my y axes, okay, build my x axes. This time I'm only going minus one and plus two, so I can, I can go more in the middle with my axes. I don't have to go very far up and very far down. So that's my x axes. So then uh, let's start with the first one and I'll make the first one uh, again, this time blue. Just so we have some color coding. So I start at negative one, cause that's my B. Oops, let's see what I'm doing there. Start at negative one, cause that's what my B is. So at negative one here, and then my, my slope, my growth is three. So I go up three, it's positive three. So one, two, three over one. So every time I'm going up three over one, up three, one, two, three over one, right? Cause the, the growth is three, every one X. Three over one, three over one, three over one. And then if I wanted to get some points in this uh, third quadrant, I would just go down three over one the other direction, just continue following that linear pattern. And I can go ahead and graph them. Uh, connect the dots to show all the solutions and label y is equal to 3x minus 1. There's that one line. The next line, to show you that one, 
is this time I'm starting. So this one, I'm starting at positive two. So positive two is one, two, or one, two right there. And once again, interesting, my growth is also three, up three over one. So up three over one, what, what do you notice is happening here? So up three over one, it's the exact same growth pattern. I can go down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. And if you notice, my, my, my graph of this, my line here of this one is running exactly parallel, right, with the other. They're, they're parallel lines because they have the same growth rate. So remember, the answer to a system of equations is where they cross, right? It was where they cross is the answer. So will these guys ever cross? No. So these are parallel lines. Never cross. Therefore, right? Therefore, there's, there is no solution. So there's no solution to this system because the parallel lines will never cross. So what if you were not graphing this and you wanted to solve this algebraically using the equal values method, right? So we would do the same thing. I want to know what X makes this true. So I, again, take those parts of the equation and I want to set them equal to each other because I'm trying to figure out what X makes those Y's equal. And if you notice, when I do this and I start to solve this, getting the variable terms on one side, subtract 3x to make it go away here. But what happens is, is it also goes away there. So all of a sudden, I no longer have variables. And I have this equation, I'm left with negative 1 equals 2. Well, negative 1 doesn't equal 2. So when we do this with an algebraic equation, when we're trying to solve an equation, and our variables all disappear, and we have an untrue statement, we would still say there is no solution. So either way you look at it, algebraically, you get no solution. And graphically, there's no solution because these, these are parallel lines and they never cross. Okay? All right, there you go.